Good morning. Let's all stand. Let's take our hymn books and turn to hymn 65, just over in the glory land. Hymn 65. two feet uh, and got to clear that all out so we're going to have to redo all of that. I don't know how long it's going to take uh, because the main reason is because <laughs> uh, they haven't shown up to tell us. <laughs> uh, so if this is any sign of you know how long it will take, it may take a while uh, because simply because uh, it's hard to get anything done when they're not here. <laughs> and so. Um, uh, but pray about that. We'd love to, to get things moving. We're going to do everything we can to get this in ship shape and get it ready and and, uh, and make things nice if we have to be here for a while. Now, I think personally, if they could just get a crew in here and do the work, it'd probably get knocked out fairly fast. But uh, but we've got to get the people here. And I know they're busy with all kinds of things all over the city uh, because there's a lot of this that went on. Um, 
All right, I think that's pretty much it. Have uh, any other announcement? Anything I'm missing? Oh, yes, uh, I just want to make sure to say this. The, uh, if you didn't get the message, we are not having a co-op uh, tomorrow uh, because we have, we've just been working kind of nonstop the last three days. And uh, Joe Biss got to do Sunday school classes, and you know things are still we're still working on things, so it's still got to um, we've got to get some things ready, and so uh, uh, it'll help us if we don't don't have co-op in the morning. Yes, ma'am. We will have Sunday school classes this week, and choir will be in. Okay, and yeah, that's true. We will have Sunday school classes, so so come to Sunday school. Uh, we'll uh, I'll let you know, and you know what, Joe Beth. Um, if we haven't written down, or if you, you may have to come up here and help me, but but um, it, after we do our prayer time and all that, if you help me remember, I'll try to tell you where the different classes, all that's going to be meeting. Also, choir will meet, and I'll go ahead and tell you that choir is going to practice or prepare over in the in the old building. You just have to go to the uh, uh, west, the, the southwest door of the auditorium. And you go to that, that door and come in, and you'll be able to have your choir practice right in the auditorium because it's, it's, it's still okay. Um, we just can't have things over there because there are no bathrooms that are really accessible once they start working. Uh, and I think, that's, I think that's it then. All right. Everything is normal this Sunday, as normal as we can be. We're going to have everything that we normally have. Amen. So, all right, let's pray. Father, I pray that you bless the Lord Jesus. Thank you for. Your love and your goodness and your patience and your mercy and your grace and and the Lord thank you uh, for even even what's happened uh, Lord you're in charge you know you know what's best and for something some reason this needed to be something we need to learn something we need to grow through some way that you're going to bless us through this and and so Lord thank you uh, for all that you do uh, and Lord help us to sincerely be appreciative of, of all things. And uh, praise you in all things, and, and uh, uh, Lord, and that we'll be content in our situation. And so, Lord, I pray that you please be with us, that you keep your hand upon us, and, and your arms around us as a mighty hedge of protection, keep people safe and from illness. And then, and then Lord, I, I again, just turn back the evil, keep it away from our church, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. Who has a praise tonight? I'm just praying for the Lord that we're going to get the things are being done up there. I'm praying for the Lord for the people that have come out and helped work Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. Just phenomenal to have the help that we have to be able to get some things done. And um, I'm very, very grateful. I'm thankful that uh, a lot of people said they didn't show up uh, today as they promised, but. It took us 10 days to get somebody to even come out. Yes. So, so we did finally get someone out to, to look at our situation. Who else has a break? Yes, sir. Uh, one of my friends, Nikki, she just had a baby a couple of days ago. They, 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 the hospital messed up all kinds of which ways. It took about two weeks for her to have everything taken care of. And when they discharged her, she ended up having to go right back in, all kinds of things. They even swapped, possibly swapped babies. But mm. she got it back. You know, all kinds of they, they forgot about her allergies and all kinds of things, but the baby and her are finally home today, and everybody's healthy, so all of well in. We went to um, Garrison's ear doctor yesterday for a follow up, and the surgery worked. It's not the greatest. Um, we go back for surgery again in two weeks, so to do it again, but it's worked. So. I'm gonna watch that just I know it's very important. Who else has a praise? Anyone else? Who has a praise tonight? Okay. Uh, who has a prayer request tonight? Uh, I've got a couple of them. Uh, Friday, I go for MRI on my knee. Uh, I had cortisone shot, and it, it worked for about two days. So, pray whatever they find is not really bad, and maybe, maybe it can get better by itself. Also, uh, the doctor called today for my nose, and we are scheduled for surgery February 7th. So they're going to ream everything out of my head and take it all out, poke everything. We need someone else. 
Pray for my sister. She's got gallstones and she's about to have to have surgery. Her name is Mindy Miles. Okay. All right. Yes, One of the ladies I take exercise with, her son-in-law recently had an amputation. His name is John Murphy. I asked for prayer at that time, but I talked to her today and he's also got a lot of physical problems on top of that. So pray for John Murphy. Okay. All right. Okay. Someone else? Ms. Mary. A couple of unspoken. You're on the wrong side. <laughs> I know. I know it's weird to be over here. But you know, I used to always sit over here. And then we moved over there. We sat in the middle for a while. Sorry, Rhonda. It's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just whatever you have to say. I'm sure. Okay. Unspoken? Unspoken. Unspoken? Who else? Yeah. Sunday morning, uh, she had a stroke. And she was a uh, young lady, and uh, so uh, remember Tasha Thompson in your prayers, as do also. To also, as do the huh? uh, Yes. Haley called this specialist yesterday, and they're going to be scheduling the surgery sometime between now and probably the end of the month. But he also thinks that the surgery is not going to correct everything, that there's more issues, and the surgery can fix. And so pray that he can figure out the rest of the issues. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I too, I, I had an email sent out on Monday night for the White and Steyer yeah. family. Um, that's my best friend Cameron's family. Her sister-in-law took her life on Monday night, so um, they're just trying to figure all that out. Her service is Saturday, um, so just be with the family and her husband especially. Um, and then um, just for my hands, I guess I have eczema <coughs> on my hands, but they are like swollen and they stay cracked and dry and I don't really know what to do for them but I stay in gloves at work so I'm just trying to get it cleared up. Okay. Yes, Rachel. Pray for Lucy. She's traveling back to school this, this weekend. church and uh, the policeman parked out in front so I went to talk to him because you probably get this a lot but I just want to say I appreciate the work that you do. He says no I don't get that at all. I was surprised to hear him say that. His name is Temple and uh, his partner they always are into is the other guy's Bradley. I told him we would pray for them tonight and he was uh, beside himself surprisingly to me with appreciation for something that he hardly ever hears. Being reminded of what we did a month or so ago, um, this is an ongoing ministry. Uh, so for Jordan, Officer Jordan Temple, <coughs> and then uh, a guy named Jordan that I met at the DMV today, had a lengthy conversation with him, who's gone to church, got married, isn't going to church, um, was in the DMV to get a so he can drive locally. And bottom line, 
Um, he's been challenged to get serious. Okay. Who else? Yes, ma'am. Pray for Adrian Johnson and and just she had COVID over the holidays. The baby's fine, but just pray for her pregnancy. Yeah. Johnny, what do you leave? Week and a half, two weeks. Throw some breakers to play, see what we're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. I meant to mention the praise, by the way. Um, Michael Meehan is here with us tonight. He had to go in. We prayed for him yeah. last week, which was amazing, and he's here. Amen. And so I was talking with him earlier and praising the Lord that he's able to be up and moving and even able to come out tonight. Amen. I'm very grateful. Amen. Amen. Yes. Uh, I'll be traveling this weekend. Uh, be back Wednesday. Um, travel mercies. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Let's uh, let's thank you for the
Father, we come to you and thank you for this opportunity to gather, and Lord, thank you for a building to gather in. And Lord, thank you for, again, the people that have so many have come and helped, and we appreciate so much to, to get this place prepared and ready to meet. Lord, we ask you continuously to uh, be with Brother Felton, continue to do his eyes. Lord, thank you for this just determination and faithfulness to come to church in the dark. And, and I know it's a struggle for him. I pray you bless him, bless Mrs. Felton, and heal her from that pain that she has. And Lord, we're just going to keep asking you. And Lord, asking you and asking you and asking you to heal them both. And the same for Ava. Lord, we just continue daily to ask you to heal her body, to raise her up, to strengthen her, to heal her completely. And we trust you and believe you to do it. Lord, thank you for our ministries and our church. I pray that you give us divine wisdom about them and for this coming year. And then, Lord, thank you that uh, we've been seeing regularly people saved through our ministries. Lord, I thank you for our missionaries as they're faithful to go through these days. And thank you, Father, that you provided for us that we were able to care for them. And that's, a, I know, a blessing and a help to them. For our nation, I pray that you give wisdom to those in leadership. And Lord, that uh, the right people would be placed in leadership. And that those that uh, are against you, dear God, that they would come under mighty conviction. Father, I pray for Garrett. Lord, I pray that you heal his little body, that you give doctors wisdom or whatever they might have to do again. Lord, I pray for Dwight, and his knee, and his nose, the surgeries that he's looking at, and Lord, that you bring healing. Wayne's sister also surgery, that you would touch her body. Give doctors wisdom in that situation. Lord, I for Kaylin. It's been a long time coming. We're still going to have to wait a while. But Lord, I pray that you please. <coughs> Between now and then, it would be nothing. It would be uh, for you to just speak the word. I mean, it's it, it's it, in, in your power. You could just heal her body now. And that you could raise her. Up and you can strengthen her body and you can bring total healing. 
So we ask you to do that. Lord, for the unspoken request, we pray that you please meet the needs of many of those. For John Murphy and his physical problems, and bless him for Jessica and her family, and that you bless them and their children, that they would be uh, better. And for Aunt Bobby, that uh, you would touch her body with the stroke, and then also Tasha Thompson, who's a People, one is very, one's relatively young, one's relatively older, and but both are loved. And I pray that you would touch them and heal them and strengthen them and give grace. And for Lucy, as she travels, for Matt, as he travels, that you bless them and keep your hands, arms around them and protect them. And, and then we thank you, the, the police officer, the Lord, talk to and think of all of them. They come here regularly in our property and Lord, try to be kind to them, encouraging to them. And I pray that you'd uplift them and give them grace, give them strength, give them uh, just, Lord, emotionally support them. Uh, for this young man, Jordan, that he had whatever spiritual need that he needed, that it was met today and that he would, he would seek you. Lord, thank you for Michael Meehan, that uh, he's strong enough to come to church. And, and Lord, thank you for your healing of his body. I pray that you continue to do that. And Father, we just love you. And Lord, before I forget, that lady who called today, I was about to forget, to call and just ask for us to pray for her. Wouldn't really, didn't want to tell me the specific, just that she just needed prayer. And Lord, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name right now, but but I pray for her. I know that you know her. I pray even at this moment that you would encourage her and you'd uplift her and you'd strengthen her. And that, Lord, most of all, if she needs to know you as Savior, that she would come to know you. And Father, I pray that you please bless us tonight as we uh, follow you, as we seek you, please. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we have, um, I'm sure I got really... Announcements kind of went through them, but I'll go through them a little bit again. Um, tomorrow we will not have the co-op, so Brother Felton, I saw him come in back there, Brother Felton. So uh, we won't be, uh, he, Brother Felton was coming to teach tomorrow, preach to the kids, and, and so we won't be doing that tomorrow. Uh, it's been, been a lot of work, still a lot of work to do, trying to get things ready if we're going to be meeting here on Sunday and then future Sundays possibly. And so um, uh, we won't be doing that tomorrow. And I'm trying to think of what else. Just a reminder, of course, the couples retreat's coming quickly. And I probably still have a couple of spots left there. It's cost is $265. Uh, you need to get that paid, of course, and um, so we can uh, take care of that when we get there. And uh, let's see if I got really anything else other than that. Uh, Pretty soon, I, I'm going to have to schedule, and I hope you maybe start thinking about it. I'll try to make a decision about it and, and uh, say it on Sunday, but we, uh, we're going to need to have uh, a work day, and here's the work day. The work day is to try to get uh, this room prepared, prepared for Belle's wedding. <laughs> so, so, truthfully, we're going to need to paint here, and this is all things that we need to do anyway. Uh, and, and there's a lot of work, patching work, and things need to be done just to make it nice. But uh, uh, as things are overdue, it's kind of like our main building when we had the uh, retreat, and that retreat, the, uh, the uh, singles conference. And boy, we got all kinds of work done over there and over here for the conference, but it was things that needed to be done anyway. We just had motivation. Well, now we've got a motivation again. And our motivation is getting rid of that. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, so no, no, we we want to we want it to be nice for her. We want it to be beautiful for the for the wedding, and and so we we need to do some work on that. Uh, but just be thinking about that. I think about uh, helping me and helping us, and and I'll be announcing. I, I'm not sure exactly. Probably going to talk to to uh, some of the fellows that are are construction minded or painting minded and find out what's a good day for them and then we'll start there and then the rest of us that, that are good at carrying things uh, it doesn't really matter uh, and 
And that's what I spent my life doing. My dad was in construction his whole life, and I, li I barely learned how to nail a nail. Uh, but I can also, but I can spot a nail. Y'all know what that means? She like spot a nail. I can do that, and I can sand. And I can carry board up and down stairs. And that's what I learned working with my dad. But uh, so uh, we look forward to, to being here. If you can, if you can help us on that. And I don't think, I think we really don't have anything else that's going on. So I guess that's it. We'll have another song. Let's stand with you. Let's start at 139. I know whom I have believed. 139. <laughs> Just focusing on it and, and concentrate on it. But John, chapter 10, verse 9, it says, I am the door. That's a great statement, amen. It's just a, just a definitive statement. Jesus says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. And so uh, what that speaks to me is, is, is the key is that, of course, he says, I am the door. And so that's the only way to heaven. He's the only door. There's not more than one door. It's kind of like the ark. There was one door. And, uh, and you got in. And, and the neat thing about it was God shut that door. Uh, you didn't open the door. You don't shut the door. You know, God shuts the door. So, so uh, you can't get out because God don't open the door. You can't get out. And so uh, we're going to find out a little bit more about that later. But, so, but also in it, it says, I shall go in and out and find pasture. It, it, and I believe it's what it's talking about is salvation and, joy, and a joyful, productive life in Christ is found through Christ's provision and protection. Yeah. And, and what, it's, what it's talking about it is the fact that, that yes, we get saved, but I, I've tried to say for so long and, and to so many, and I've preached to those sailors and I've saved them, listen, God saved you. And sometimes I think the most I ever had one night had 56 sailors lined up that had trusted Christ. And I looked at that 56 boys and I said, fellas, uh, you just, if you sincerely admit what you said and you trust in Christ right now, yeah, you have a home in heaven, but do you understand that also what he has given you now is giving you the opportunity for a life worth living. Amen. You don't have to trash your life. Yeah. 
You have the Holy Spirit of God in you now, and that's what he says, and shall go in and out and find pasture. Uh, listen, you're not going to go hungry serving God. Uh, you may, you may, you may uh, be, you know, you may feel like you are hungry. You may feel like uh, that you don't have everything that you want. You may feel like that you, uh, that you, you, you don't uh, have what you want. But the fact is, God will provide what you need. He will sustain you. He will. Hey, yes, amen. Uh, now look, that, that, that thing over there picks up. That microphone picks up. So Matt, you're beside it. So listen, it, it, you just got to amen all the time. So these people on this internet thing think, man, those folks really amen him. Amen, preacher. Thank you. Praise <laughs> the but every once in a while, change your voice, all right? <laughs> but, uh, now, so look at verse 10. Verse 10, we'll just move on. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And, and that's Satan, all right? Yeah. They, got, they got Bible clubs. Bible club. They got clubs now in, in schools, Satan clubs. Well, listen, it, it, it was always is so stupid to me. You, want, you don't want God, so you want the guy that loses to God. That didn't make a bit of sense, folks. But uh, but except the fact that they, you know, there are no atheists. They believe in God. They intentionally reject it. Yeah, right. And so the thief cometh not in, uh, cometh not, but to, for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus says, I I am come that they might that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And again, it goes back down to that previous verse. It's not just you're going to have eternal life. It's not just going to, but you're going to have an abundant life. Amen. It's not just I'm going to give you a life to live, but you can have an abundant life. Uh, folks, you know, Christian life should be a good life. Amen. Amen. It really should. I, I cannot. I, it would take me. Uh, I'd have to shut down everything and do nothing but write for the next year to try to come close to, to if God gave me the ability to remember everything in my Christian life, all the blessings, all the miracles, all the things that he's done, it would take me, it, it'd take me so long to even to put that down on paper. Yeah. It's just incredible what God can and will do. All right. Uh, then a directly prophetic verse is verse 11. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So this is a prophetic verse. He's saying, I am the good shepherd and I'm going to give my life. Now the shepherd would have to, a good shepherd, they understood this better than we understand it because they were all, they knew shepherds and, and they, they may be shepherds. And they, that was their, their livelihood for so many and they understood the good shepherd's going to fight the evil that comes in. The good shepherd's going to fight the wolf. The good shepherd's going to fight the lion. The good shepherd's going to fight the bear. He's going to fight them all. He's going to fight them. The good shepherd's going to do that. And, and, and they understood that. He said, I am the good shepherd. Amen. And so the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And that means even to the point that the really good shepherd... Might, he was risking his life to fight those kind of animals to keep them away from the sheep. But this good shepherd, the good shepherd, was going to give his life. And so, verse 12, but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, that's somebody just hired to do the work. They're doing it for pay, not for love. They're doing it for pay, not for a calling. Uh, you know, so, uh, and, and uh, sadly, uh, this is really kind of talking about people in service. And they're, they're you know, brother, you know, there's a lot of hirelings out there. And that's a sad statement, but they are. They're hirelings. And so, but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, who's on the sheep or not. And so, uh, you know, he, well, we'll get to it. See if the sheep, the sheep, uh, see if the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. Now, here's the thing. When, when somebody is called to some, you know, missionaries, uh, they, they, they have to genuinely be called to go to most fields. Yeah. Okay, I understand. You know, if they're going to be a missionary to Ireland, maybe you don't, you know, of course, all of that's going to be 
tough, but you know, if you're going to go into a, uh, a developed country, it's not quite the same thing. But, you, but, but a lot of areas in the world, you go to be a missionary, like the, the missionary that passed away, and I'm losing the name right now. Tell me the name. Uh, Stephen Trail. Trail. Uh, Brother Trail that lost. Okay, he was in Iran. Iraq. Iraq. He's in Iraq. Uh, lost his life. But he's there. You know what? That's a mystery. He's going to be called. Now, if he's there to make money, uh, okay, he's not staying there. First of all, he's not going there. Okay, so uh, when someone is in the business of the ministry, and, and, and listen, I, I, I've I've seen this firsthand. When someone's in the business of the ministry, uh, they're there to succeed or to, to receive benefits from the ministry. Uh, be very careful here, but, but uh, there was a fellow in a position, and they, they came to me and I gave my recommendation. I said, I said, listen, uh, I said, I'm not a condemning person, I'm not doing anything, but you're asking me what I've seen, what I've perceived, and I said, the, the fact is, is that he is here because of the salary, and as soon as there's a better salary, he's gone. That's it. And so they're done, they, they, they succeed to receive the benefits from the ministry. These do not see or desire to see the evil that comes to destroy. They don't. They want nothing to do with evil. They don't even look at it because their their focus is is not on the sheep. Their focus is on their own prosperity. And, and, that, and that's why you have to be careful these prosperity gospel preachers because the only one that truly is, is becoming prosperous is the guy that's telling everybody that they can become prosperous. Right, right. Okay? And so uh, they're only concerned with success and possessions and power. And this is who God, you can understand, this is who Jesus is describing. He's saying this is, uh, they're, they're out there. He's saying these people... They say they care about the sheep, but they don't care about the sheep. When trial comes, when the enemy comes, they're booking. They're not going to fight for you. They're not going to die for you. The shepherd should be willing to fight and die for the sheep. The hireling lives by basically the end justifies the means. Uh, that's you know, a so-called ministry of, I think, the end justifies the means. Doing whatever and saying whatever that will bring crowd success and prosperity. It's, if you don't like what I'm saying, then I'll change it. Uh, you, know, you know, like one fellow you know, built his church, and it was the start of this whole progressive movement up in Chicago, and he did it by going into the, all the area, and he went and canvassed the area to find out what do people want in a church. Well, God's already told us what's supposed to be in the church. Right. It's like a thing I was looking, uh, looking at today. Somebody sent me this thing. It's like a a preview of, of, of a movie. It's, it's about the 60s, 70s Jesus movement and, and how uh, churches, uh, you know, like us, you know, that we, would, we didn't want those hippies in our church. And so, uh, but finally one fella that they didn't, you know, that his congregation didn't want those hippies, Jesus freaks in his church. So, so uh, it, it implies that Jesus came and spoke to him and told him, those are my people. And, well, listen, we're all his people. But the whole premise was that he was saying, Jesus told him that you've got to speak their language. And, and, and I want you to understand what that means. That means now they're going to play their music. They're going to play, you know, talk their terminology. They're going to uh, allow their sexuality. They're going to go, and listen, folks, that's not the way you reach people. Not for Christ. I told my wife, Listen, the church is not so that you so that we can speak your language. The church is so that we can show you what God's language is. Right. Amen. How y'all doing? Amen. Are you saying amen loud enough so it gets on there? Okay. <laughs> Verse 13, the hireling fleeth because he is a hireling. That's why he brother. And careth not for the sheep. When trouble comes, when there's danger, the hireling will run, will flee, for he only cares for himself. And, and, and again, you know, I've been in this thing for a long time, but I've known men who call themselves pastors, who've got, got the church, and this is one of the things that I it frustrates me like nothing else, but they go in all kinds of debt 
uh, you know, building beautiful buildings and offices and all these kind of things. They get, the, they can only, they got to have the nicest of the nicest of everything because that's how you reach money. If you look like you got money, that's the philosophy of business. You reach money if you got money. And so they got to look like they got money. And so then they get the, the, the church overwhelmed to death. And then they realize that they don't have, that it's not working. And they're not getting, they're not drawing in the millions. And they're not drawing in all the money. And so you know what they do? They resign and go do it to another church. That's a higher level. Uh, it's one reason, listen, I'm trying my best to get us out of debt. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 so, some, when the battle comes, they move to an easier, more productive place. All right. Uh, I almost talked about that anymore. We'll go to the next verse. Are you okay? Amen. All right. Verse 14, I'm the good shepherd. Wait, I, I love this chapter because Jesus didn't pull any punches. You know, they want, they, we're going to see this in a second, but I'm the good shepherd and know my sheep, and listen to this, and am known of mine. Amen. We should know that we're saved. Amen. Amen. Uh, Jesus knows his, and we are his, and but here's the key we should know that we're his. Amen. You know, you, if you're still living in doubts about whether you're going to go to heaven, whether you are. A joint heir with Christ. I was talking to my wife again. You know, we're talking about a topic. You know, she was doing some study, and I said, you know, the, the, I love that verse. Now, are we the sons of God? I did not. <laughs> now, you know why? Because the Holy Spirit of God is in me. Now, are we the sons of God? You know what I mean? We're joint heirs with Christ. And now, so all right, uh, we should know that we're saved. Jesus knows His and. The, and we who are his should know that we are his. Uh, Romans 8, 16 says, The Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Right. Now, Jesus gives his relationship with the Father as an example of this truth, the truth that we're just talking about here, that he knows us, we know him. Now, look at verse 15. Verse, he's going he's to give them an example. He's going to explain to him. He said, verse 15, he says, As the Father knoweth me, even so... No, I the Father. He says, he said, it goes both ways. I, he knows me, and I know him. And he's telling me, he knows me, and I'm supposed to know him. Folks, that's why we go through the Bible. Amen. Amen. We're going through it again this year. So how many years are we going to do this? Maybe until Jesus comes. Amen. Because it's so important that we can end this book because this is the mind of Christ. Right. You can't know it any other way. Right. People tell me all the time, you know, I've got these, these uh, progressives, you know, tell, you know that, that you, you put too much into the Bible. You put too much, you, you make Bible out like it's God. <laughs> all scripture comes by the inspiration of God. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. What does that mean, folks? Just, oh, give me the mind. Give me the mind. Give me the mind. <laughs> no, the mind is here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, but I, you know, the Spirit's going to speak to me and tell me what his mind is. What? Well, he's going to tell you most anything. And I don't mean it's the Spirit. It may be a spirit. It may be your desires. Right. Folks, it's so critical that we we always weigh anything that's coming in our heart, coming in our mind. We weigh it against the Word of God. Amen. Amen. That's right. And I'm not making like the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is what gives the, is the one who gives us the understanding of this book. Yeah. Are y'all okay? Yeah. Yeah. I just it's because I'm too tired. I can't see you. All right. In verse 16, we see that there will be another group that is brought into the fold. Now, this is this is the kind of thing that is, you, you see when you take it slow and you go verse by verse. Because notice this, verse 16. And other sheep I have, 
Now he's talking about his own. I believe he's talking about the Jews. You know, the, the Jewish right. Christians. Okay? And other folk, uh, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, That's right. them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Amen. Isn't that good? Amen, sir. Hey, we were grafting in. Amen. He said, there's another one. I'm pulling them into the fold. It's just different pictures. You graft them into the vine. I'm pulling them into the fold. And when they come in, we're all one. Amen. Amen. One fold and one shepherd. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, this is all brought about through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, which verse 17 now teaches us. Look at verse 17. Therefore doth my father love me because I laid down my life. Okay, so Jesus is, it, it is making it clear all this happened. This fold has this fold brought into it that they can only take place by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so that's what we see here. Therefore doth my father love me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. And folks, let me emphasize one more time. I've done this over the whole seven years I've been here. Uh, just to remind you, yesterday was seven years ago I arrived at this place. Amen. 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 Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, now, but but I don't remember what I was going to say. I got so moved by that. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, and that's this. So when you present the gospel, don't leave Jesus in the grave. Right. Yeah. It's not the gospel unless you have a resurrection. Yeah. Okay? So you've got to bring, uh, we, we had tracks printed. I got the tracks, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't notice it at first. And then I was reading through it one day and realized it didn't have the resurrection in it. It didn't say anything about the resurrection. And I called back and said, hey, we gotta, uh, we got to change this. I, you know, I gotta have a statement that yes, he was he was crucified. Yes, he died for our sins. Yes, he was buried. But yes, he arose from the grave. You gotta know he rose from the grave, or he's Muhammad. Okay. Verse eighteen. No man taketh it from me, and this is this is so crucial just to to understand uh, that. The people, the Jews, the, you know, uh, no, nobody took Jesus' life. He gave his life. Right. No man takes it from me, but I lay it down on myself. That's love, folks. I have power to lay it down. You know, can you imagine this? It's one thing when you say, I'll give up my life, but I really don't have power in this situation. I'm willing to die. But he has power to lay it down. He had power to take it up again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Now this is crucial. Jesus makes it clear that he will give his life, but he also will rise from the grave, and it's all God's divine plan for the salvation of man. It's God's plan. And so, whenever the gospel is given, people are brought to a point of decision. We talked about this before. You go to John chapter 10, verse 19. Through 21, it says, there was a division, therefore again, among the Jews for these saying. Jesus is making it real clear who he is. He's making it real clear uh, that he is the way of salvation. And so what's that going to do? It's going to bring a division in people. It'll bring a division in families. That's right. It'll bring a yeah. division. It's going to come. You've got to make a decision. When that's presented to you, you've got to make a decision. Amen. And I'll have people say, well, I'm not ready to make a decision. I say, you just did it. The, a decision will be made. Yeah. And so, uh, and here we see that. It says, there was a division, therefore, again, among the Jews for these sayings, and many of them said, he hath a devil, and it's mad. I've had people respond to me that way. Uh, Why hear ye him? And others said, these are not the words of him that hath the devil. <clears throat> Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? You know, it's, it, it was... Uh, I just want you to, this is demonstrating, and, and sometimes we give credit you know, to Satan, to different things, but, but this is Jesus. 
And Jesus says, can the devil open, well, no, I'm sorry. Others said, I probably, I was about to mess up here. My mind's a little tired. Others said, these are not the words of him that hath the devil. Others said, can the devil open the eyes of the blind? Forget that. All right, now John chapter 10, verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter, and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Now, it almost looks like you're about to have a change of thought, whatever, but this is not a change of thought, but it's a, simply a reference point uh, in the truth being given. It's just kind of giving you a, a mental picture of who Jesus, where he was, what he was doing, when he was confronted. So many in this lost world uh, have uh, already had their minds made up about Jesus, but they will act as though they are really interested. And so when they ask this question, uh, back up here in verse 19 or 20, and many of them said, uh, he had the devil in his mad way to hear him, and it goes uh, 22, uh, and it was a Jerusalem the feast, and Jesus walked to the temple. Uh, this is all leading to a statement that's going to be making in 24. 24 says, then came the Jews round right about him and said unto him, how long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Now, the reason I'm saying this is that I think the lost world often, uh, they will say things that sound like they are on your side or at least willing to listen or they're open. Uh, they'll, they'll act as though they're really interested, but, it's, but I believe it's usually to mock you, contradict you, or trap you. Mm -hmm. And that's what you've got to be careful of. Uh, you've got to be, I had a guy that did this to me. He, uh, he called the church. And he called the church, and he was so sincere. Brother, I just, you know, I, I, I just need, I need help, and, and I, I want you to explain to me uh, this whole thing about salvation. And, and so, you know, I took probably 10 minutes, and I'm going to make sure. And this guy, and as soon as I got through explaining, man, he flipped. And he was a Church of Christ, baptismal. He just called our church to argue with somebody. He called our church to tell me I was wrong, I was of hell, I was this and that, because I was sending people to hell because you don't get saved by praying a prayer. Well, I agree with you. And I told him, well, you don't. You get saved by what you believe in your heart. But I said to him, you sure don't get saved by getting in some water. That's right. That's right. So, That's right. in fact, yeah, I'll prove it to you. Get that water and let me hold you under for a while. All right. <laughs> Now, they have no real desire to know, only to fuel a, an argument or get fuel to convince you, to, to, to hurt you somehow or contradict you. And so, here's, a, here's a, again a wonderful thing. Jesus was not fooled. We get fooled. For about 10 minutes, I was fooled. Yes. Go ahead, you can admit it. Have you ever been fooled? <laughs> yeah, and every time you buy something on credit. Yeah. <laughs> we went we went on this on this trip, and the only morning we did anything other than the planned thing is, is that if we went and listened to one of those sales spills about a, a timeshare, we get $99 seven days, and I'm like, okay. They looked at me and said, where would you use this? I said, Panama City. <laughs> and so uh, I said, and they said, well, we'll give you $30 to a restaurant. We'll give you, you know, these $10, $12 tickets or something to go up in the tower and view everything. And so, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to be, if I, in the worst case scenario, I'm out, you know, about 45 bucks. So I said, yeah, I'll do it. You're gonna, you know, I'm going to get set of days down in uh, Panama City for 99 bucks. I'll take it. <laughs> Well, you got to listen, you know, for like two hours to the people. Yeah. 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 I sat there that whole time. That man tried to talk to me. And every time he paused, I started witnessing to him. <laughs> we got out of there quicker that way. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, you know, 
I got fooled on one of those things way, way back. I actually signed up for one. Got back home, God gave me some sense, and before the time was up, I canceled it. And here's what they did. When, it, when we went down to, and it was down in Florida then, we went down there, and, and the hotel, you get this free hotel, you just come down there, it was a rat trap. <laughs> I couldn't, I apologized to Joe Beth about 19 times. I'm like, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just didn't know it was good. So we, the next morning, we go to this, this meeting. And so I signed up for it. They put us in this palace for the next couple of days or whatever it was. Man, it was nice. We get back and I cancel it. They sent me a bill for the, for the hotel rooms. I got food. Jesus had never got food. Now here's, he's so, he's so good. Look at, look at verse 26. It says, but ye believe not. <laughs> uh, it, it, well, I'm sorry, I skipped verse 25. Jesus answered them, as I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Now, it, is it, if they didn't believe the healings, if they didn't believe the miracles, if they didn't believe the, the following of those who did believe, they're not going to believe his words. And Jesus knew this. And he said, verse 26, but, but ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Now the great promise and assurance comes in verse 28. And I love this word. And, and I give unto them eternal life. This is, this is very direct, folks. And I give unto them eternal life. You know what God gave you the moment you trusted him as your Savior? He gave you eternal life. Amen. It was a gift. And they shall not perish. You understand? There's a promise. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And if that's not good enough, my Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I've always said people who are in Jesus' hand, we are in the Father's hand, and then we're sealed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. This statement ends with the proclamation of his deity. This little series we have right here. And I just want to warn you, I, you know, I can't see that clock back there very well, so you, know, you never know when we may stop. <laughs> and so, uh, so you got two choices, just endure the pain or get a bigger clock. And so the statement ends with a proclamation of his deity. So he's going through all this and he tells him he's going to die. He tells him he's the, he's the shepherd, the good shepherd. He says he's going to die for the sheep. He says he's going to be buried, rose from the rose, rise from the grave. Uh, he he said that uh, you know these are mine and they're saved and, and they have eternal life and, and and they're not just in my hand; they're in the Father's hand. And 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 then he he just said, and watch this now. He's going to tell him. Now I'm going to tell you what you've been waiting for. You see, these people wanted to trap him. So he says, okay, I've given you all the gospel. You don't want to hear it, and I've given it to you. That old boy had to think he was nice because he's trying to sell us, so he's kind of bearing with us and listening to it. He said like three times, ain't nobody ever asked you this. So, but here, he's trying to sell. Did he really believe? No. Watch this. Real short verse. I and my Father are one. Amen. Amen. It's the deity of Jesus Christ. You know, there's Baptist churches today that no longer believe Jesus Christ is God. If you don't believe He's God, how did He raise Himself from the dead? That's right. If you don't believe he's God, you can't trust him for your eternal life because right. only God could live on this planet sinlessly perfect. Right. right. So, this, this uh, to me, this this chapter is just, well, John is just a boy you would count book anyway. If, if you really look at it, so simplistic, but it just keeps nailing it. And it's straightforward, and Jesus keeps telling them. And they don't like it, and we'll find out they don't like it. But uh, there it is. 
It's 8-0. I don't know. 8-0. Yes, sir? No, it's 8-0. Oh, 8-0. <laughs> All right. Brother Allen, close the prayer. Thank you for the things that you teach us time and time again. 